few more. Okay, can you please agree, everybody, that we can record this? So, um, fantastic. We have other people connecting. So that's that's really good. So I'm just going to do some sort of like, remember to have your phone ready. Where's my phone? Get the phone ready. Yeah, everybody shakes the phone. We all have fun. Yes, fantastic. Because, you know, the drill, you have to participate. I want to talk. I talk too much. I just want you to give me your input. So there's a few more connecting. So let's... There's 14 uh, connection with different people. Um, let's wait another two minutes. In Italy, we would, we, we would wait 15 minutes. We have the academic 15 minutes. Do you have that <laughs> yeah. in your countries? <laughs> you do? Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, 15 minutes to wait till everybody arrives. <laughs> What about Amy? What about in France? Do you wait for 15 minutes to to wait? No? <laughs> we no can't. problem. No, no problem. problem. We won't wait 15 minutes. We just give them another two minutes. You know, we, we have a compromise between all nations. <laughs> okay. So the other thing I would like to ask you, please, is if you're not talking, please uh, switch your microphone off uh, for the simple reason that there's quite a few of us and in other case it will be a bit difficult to to we get interference and things like that so do you think we should start give me a thumb up if we should start <laughs> who wants to start thumb up a thumb up okay right we give them almost five minutes who comes late loses the first part. So officially welcome to our fourth Erasmus Club with new and old friends. I'm really pleased to see you all again uh, and uh, you're all looking well. That's even better nowadays. And so I decided today to do a little game with you and to greet you, uh, but do also a little quiz. I know you like your mentees, so get your phone ready, because I'm gonna say, like, do you know Eurovision Song Contest? They kind of say, you know, Italy greets, uh, so. I'm gonna say, from Lanciano in Italy, we greet first and for all, our other friends in Italy, with the capital is, tell me your capital, what's the capital of Italy? Not coming? What's the capital of Italy? Come on guys, don't let me down. And Lanciano greets the capital of France and all our French P, our friends. And then we have the capital of Spain and all our Spain friends. And we have also Greece and the capital of Greece and all our Greek friends. Greetings from Lanciano, the points come later. Then we have, of course, our friends from Turkey and their wonderful capital. And from the UK, we have friends from the UK. And what is your capital? I don't think Katie and Orsonia is capital, so <laughs> thank you anyway. And we have our German friends. Uh, so where, what's your capital? So let's have a look. Uh, yes, and of course I forgot. Estonia, our Estonian friends. Up north, hello from, to Estonia from Italy, down south. Tell us your capital. So let's have a look. Uh, Berlin, Rome, Paris, I'm going to ignore the idiots, Madrid, what, what's, what's missing? We have Estonia, come on Estonia, tell us your capital, is it not, they might not be on, uh... well, you can see that the Italians are taking the Michael, but that's okay. So <laughs> it's part of it too. 
Bucharest, yeah, but it's Romania. Obviously, we have also Romanian friends. Well, there's Tallinn, which somebody is telling me here, and it's written in in Russian. So uh, we have also Tallinn. So thank you. And welcome everybody. There is seven nations here and it's a very welcome. Buongiorno, bonjour, bona, uh, uh, buenos dias, I don't know uh, any other language. Oh, uh, yamas, what else can I say? Shalom to all of you and to, to this, to coming to here. Now, uh, that was a, to, to check out that you new mentee and to get us warmed up. Now let's get to our um, subject, what we're actually going to talk about. Uh, as you know, uh, last week, or you maybe not know, uh, all the countries of the world met in Glasgow for an environment uh, um, convention called the COP26. Uh, Gabby, what happened in the COP26 in Glasgow? Well, I think a lot happened and also a lot was achieved to help save the environment. So many actions were agreed from all the countries in the world that participated in this meeting. Like, and, was it, and was it important what nationality they were, what religion, what ethnicity? Absolutely not. This was the less important thing. The most important thing was to decide together, despite the differences, a common line to act for the environment, for the benefit of everybody. So, what they have decided, but we're going to show you, and it was young people who are the forerunner in this. You young people, I'm old, I have children which are your age. But, you know, I'm, I'm young at heart, give me that. <laughs> so, you young people, you created this. You make sure that the politician, the people who have the power, actually decided, we need to talk about this. We need to change this. And you created something else. You created the ultimate inclusion thing. Because, yeah. you know what? We have one world one world and we all have to live in it so let's see with a video of the young people which influence all of us and hi i'm diana cowern i'm a physicist and science communicator with the youtube channel physics girl and here at cop 26 the last couple days have been about youth and nature and it's been amazing meeting some incredible youth activists so let's take a look A lot of people call it climate anxiety, but for me, it's not climate anxiety, it's climate reality, unfortunately. So yes, accelerated action is exactly what we need and exactly what we demand right now. Youth should be actively and meaningfully involved in all decision-making processes concerning climate and environmental governance, because it is these processes that will determine the type of future we will live in. When you leave one person out, you actually end up creating another problem. You know, it's just like, we're in, we don't notice the importance of a species until it's gone. We are not neglecting the previous generations. It's not a zero-sum uh, equation. We want to learn from the previous generation, not to repeat their mistakes, but also to repeat the good practices and maybe scale it up. I would like to ask you to help the youth in your country, to hear them, to involve them, because we only have one planet, and this is our only chance. There's a lot of really smart and educated young people which I think should have the power to speak up in high-level discussions. First and foremost, we urge national governments to reinforce urban innovation and sustainable infrastructure. One thing is clear, we are ready for action. You don't have to be a, a technical scientist, you don't have to be an economist, you don't have to be um, an amazing poet, you don't even have to be somebody that's like an extroverted extrovert and wants to go out campaigning in the streets. You can be whomever you want to be and still be a part of the climate fight. For all the events in action, stay tuned to the COP26 YouTube channel.
I have been saying to Barbadians for many years that many hands make light work. Today, we need the correct mix of voices, ambition, and action. Okay, that was what came out of the COP26. You can see it was all young people and they're saying, okay, we will learn from your mistakes, but we will also take you good practice. But the old person that then said it needs to be mixed. We have a chance of changing our little world, our surroundings. We can decide for our own life to make choices. Choices which give us a more inclusive and a better society in all aspects. We cannot leave anybody out. The only thing I was a bit disappointed, Gabby, was the final statement. So what was the final statement? Yes. In the final statement, we started with uh, zero uh, carbon emissions, but unfortunately, due to uh, the decision of some countries, we passed to reduce carbon emissions. But anyways, it's always a step further in order to a better environment. And an inclusive environment. Exactly. So, you know why we had to do this? It's because of some country. Unfortunately, when you want to do change, change doesn't come from one day to another. Change is a gradual thing. It's you start with yourself. You know, there's Michael Jackson. I don't know if you know the, the, the song of Michael Jackson, which says, if you want change, start with the person you see in the mirror. So you have to start with yourself with a change. Uh, but sometimes economy couldn't agree to this because their, their system, their work was based on carbon. So let's see how informed you are, uh, which are where the country which could not agree to zero carbon emission because their economy is heavily based on carbon and therefore if they would agree to zero carbon for 2030 it would make their economy collapse and therefore have people be more poorer and not included in society. Let's open the voting. Let, let us hear about you. What, which one do you think it was? You can choose more than one. Was it Turkey, Italy, India, China, Australia? Which economies are so based on carbon mm. that uh, uh, you, you didn't? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We voting <laughs> here. We getting really voting. So... You know, obviously, we all, I think a lot of us agree on China, and mm -hmm. I think that was one of them. Uh, Turkey, you know, right. uh, Turkey is not that based on carbon, and therefore Turkey was well up for it. Uh, the same for Italy. Italy has had a lot of policies on changing from carbon to neutral uh, energy. So even Italy was all up to it. In fact, Italy was one of the country which was a leading part in all this. So we're proud of you. Thank you very much. Um, right. So the voting is closed. Yes, you got it right. China. China is heavily, heavily based on carbon. They cannot possibly change it in 10 years. India is the same. They have also problems. But the surprising one for me was, Gabi, who was it? Australia. It was very surprising. Yes. Australia did not agree to reduce carbon emission because their economy is heavily, heavily based on coal. On coal. So you see, sometimes change needs time. But they all agreed, which is a very big step for them, to reduce carbon emission because the only way we will change is if you we communicate if we get a common goal and we stick to it 
if we impose things, and unfortunately in the past we have done that in history too often, then it's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. When something doesn't belong to you, it won't happen. So even if it was from zero to reduce carbon emission, it was a huge success and I think country will now keep to it. But we have also to do our part of it, right, Gabby? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, Each one of let's us. see. What does it mean, the five R's? What do they stand for? Let's take your phones. Let's put the Azimenti on. Let's start with thinking, what can I do to make sure that my country, my world, becomes more green and more social included. So what do the five R stand for? The voting is open. You have some options. You can choose the one you think is the right one. So you have reuse, recycle, reduce, repair, rethink, recycle, reuse, reduce, remind, rethink, rethink, remind, remember, reassure, re reuse. Oh, we have some very, very clever people here. So, yeah. yes, <laughs> the voting is going. Which one is it? So, but I, I like. Wow. I mean, I personally reduce all my bottle. Uh, I don't throw bottles away. Um, even the beer bottles in the summer in Italy, we have this traditional i pomodori of the tomato passata. And I have bottles which are 30 years old because, you yes. know, somebody <laughs> has drunk beer out of them and now we, we wash them, we disinfect them and we use them every year to redo our tomato bottle. But the voting is about close to one and go. One, one, we're getting more and more people, 51 people voted. Thank you very much. And you're absolutely right. The majority got it right. It's reuse, recycle, reduce, repair, and rethink, which was the assignment you got for this time. So now I would like people to go if you can get ready. We have the group of Ilenia Faraone and Benedetta Coletto, and then Benedetta Columbaro, Maria Eva da, da Alessandro, Elena Napoleone, and Sara Scharza, and Ella from Turkey. If you could get ready and uh, uh, open your mic and maybe also show us yourself. Uh, and maybe you could tell us about yourself and what you do for the five hours. Have we got Ilenia or Benedetta here? It's time for you to speak. Oh, is anybody else here? Um, hi. Um, Put also the camera on so we can see you. Yes. Uh, wait a second. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Irania Faraoni and uh, I'm from uh, your class. <laughs> Hi, I'm Benedetta Coletto and uh, I'm also from uh, Liceo Classico. Okay, next slide. So what do you do to recycle? Uh, to recycle, I'm doing waste sorting to help the environment and I use recycled paper. So what is this picture? What is this picture with a, with, a, with a van and water? What are you doing there? Uh, there, uh, there are people who are uh, recycle, recycling paper. Do you do it? Yes. Yes, okay. I do. Okay, thank you very much. And the next slide. So this is the recycling. What you do, do you guys do to reduce? 
To reduce, uh, I turn off the lights uh, when I don't need them and I try to use uh, as, as little water as possible. What does that mean? So how many showers do you have on a day? Um, one. That's good. So do you time your shower? Do you give no. yourself a time? I don't shower more than two minutes or, or don't you do this? Um, uh, I didn't understand. Okay, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> and tell your friends not to laugh, they can come and help you. So what do you reuse? Uh, to reuse, uh, I buy reusable bottles to prevent the plastic waste and uh, I use uh, rechargeable batteries. That's very good. And the last, the fourth one, what do you, what do, you do to repair? To repair, I uh, try uh, to repair what I can, like the dance shoes or the bike, to use them for a longer time. So you're a ballerina? Yeah. What kind of dancing do you do? Uh, classic. Ah, beautiful. Okay, and the last one? What do you do to rethink? Uh, I try to rethink many things I can't use anymore. For example, I use a broken guitar as a shelf for plants, or I transform a use of paper into a pen holder. Can I have one? Will you do one for me? Will you do one for me? Me la, me la crei une a me? Uh, okay, yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, it was that, uh, who was speaking, Ilenia or Benedetta? Uh, Benedetta. Well, thank you, Benedetta. That was very interesting. And I really like the guitar and the paper thing. So next time we, you will teach us how to do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. That was one. So you can see uh, uh, there was quite a bit of creativity here with the guitar and the paper. Let's see what uh, Benedetta Columbaro, Maria Eva D'Angelo, Elena Napoleone and Sara Schiazza, what they have to uh, tell us. Are you there? Are you there? Guys, when I call you, just get on there. <laughs> In this case, we're waiting. And it's not nice unless you want me to sing, but that's not a good thing. <laughs> I get Amy to sing. She looks like she has a nice voice. Oh, hola. Hola, can you sing? No? Anybody's able to sing no. here? No? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. As they're not appearing, uh, let's let's go with, um, with Ella. Ella, would you like to tell us, Ella, are you here? Yes, I'm here. I can yeah, go back to there. Ella, let's let, let's uh, put your on and why don't you tell us what you do, Ella? Ella is from uh, Czech, from Aden, right? Yes, I'm 17 and I'm from Turkey. And first, I want to uh, say that I would love to turn on my uh, camera, but I'm afraid the internet connection is not that strong. So I'm just going to go on with my presentation with my camera. Uh, off. Uh, what do I do to recycle? I use recycling bins uh, at all times. Um, so you, have find them more. you have different colors for different things. I mean, not different colors, but they are different bins. Uh, this is not the actual picture from uh, mine, but uh, what do I do to reduce? Uh, I have a guinea pig at home, and if you know guinea pigs, they would love to eat food scraps, and they would prefer the food scraps rather than the food itself. So we rarely have um, vegetable or fruit uh, going to waste. Okay, fantastic. That's a good thing, get an animal. I've got a cat, it's similar there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what I do to reuse, uh, I thrift shop. Uh, it's when you learn how to thrift. 
thrift shop, you can really find good pieces for really good prices. And uh, I sometimes sell stuff to a thrift shop. Uh, so that's all about it. Ella, for me, which is an old fool, what's thrift shop? Uh, thrift shops are uh, places where you can buy clothes that are, that are second hand. Like I found a Chanel uh, belt one and it was like 15 bucks. I don't know if it is fake or real, but it was very surprising to see something like that in a so you, shop. You find things which you wouldn't find in a normal shop because it's yes. a bit vintage. Vintage stuff, stuff that probably has memories from uh, people. I think it's fun to a uh, thrift shop and wear things that people have worn in the past. And so what? Uh, I'm sorry. No, sorry. Say. Okay, uh, what I do to repair, I learned how to use tools. And when you know how to use tools, there are uh, rarely things that you can fix in our in-house. Uh, I change chandeliers, I fix, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to think. Uh, so I don't have to throw things out or uh, call a person to fix it. Uh, what I do to rethink. I rethink every single item uh, that I'm going to throw out. You can, I'm sorry, can you switch to the next slide? Yeah, thinking. next slide, please, Cecilia. Okay, thank you. Uh, what I do to rethink, I rethink on items that I'm planning to get rid of. Like, can I turn this uh, piece into something new? Can I give this to a person? Can I donate this? Uh, can I um, recycle this? And if not, I sadly throw it out. That's very interesting, Ella. You're quite right. You know, sometimes it doesn't affect me anymore, so I give it to people around me. Or yeah. There's always somebody you can give something. And uh, what you think, it's not nice anymore. For other people, it's a treasure. And also remember that you can also donate. There's, I don't know in your country, but in our country, we have um, mm -hmm. close donation. Yeah, uh, we have them too. And so you can always donate um, it to to the to the to the bank, the close bank, and um, and if you have a garden, you know the garden uh, plastic bags, aluminium bags, they do very good thing. I don't know. Here in the winter, we have, for example, uh, snails, which will eat uh, also in the summer, will eat our crops, our flowers. So you can yeah. put them around the flowers so the snails don't come and you have reduced the aluminium. So, yeah, it's really cool, Ella. You gave us a lot Thank of you. ideas there. And uh, also Benedetta before gave us a lot of ideas. I mean, a guitar, I never thought of a guitar, stuff, but it looked really fantastic. So thanks guys. Uh, that was really good. Um, do we have now the other group ready or we will move on? No sign. Benedetta. Well, let's a little game uh, like let's see how clever you know about how long does it actually take to disintegrate certain products we all wearing face masks now so get your phones ready and let's see so how long does it take for face masks to be biodegradable uh, so, did you ever think, I mean, there's a lot of masks now, it's been thrown away, uh, we lose them, I mean, I, I'm the first guilty one, I lose my mask and I always get very upset when I do that because I know how long it takes to be biodegradable, uh, but, you know, how long does it actually take for a face mask to biodegrade? Hmm. Uh, you know, we have... Yeah, keep voting, hmm. keep voting, keep voting. We will. Uh, I mean, what we can do, what I've done now is like I use uh, not just the ones which you can use just one time, but I use the ones which I can reuse. And uh, I went to a scientist and he told me, well, you can use it for eight hours, then, then buy disinfectant and spray the mask with disinfectant leave it for eight hours to dry and then you can re reuse them up to 10 times 
So that's sort of a way of reducing the waste of mask by yeah. buying some simple disinfectant and spraying the disinfectant after eight hours of wearing it and leaving it for eight hours to dry. And then you can reuse them for 10 times. So it is also, it saves also money because, you know, you have no uh, less masks to buy. So Gabby, which one is the answer? Well, oh. even if the majority selected one year, unfortunately to biodegrade a mask, we need 450 years. So this is a lot of time. So we should think how we can reuse this uh these objects we need every day today exactly so were you shocked i was shocked when i found that out i was thinking more about a year but 450 is a long time yeah. so let's think how can we do this now let's do another one how long does it take for a glass or bottle to be biodegradable let's see if you can if you know that let's so, see I mean, you okay. need, we never, it's a very recent, I mean, people have been talking about, about biodegradable for a long time, but it was, it's only been since the um, Green Fridays of Greta, which politician and the rest of the world, which was not having it, like also the states, have now started to really take this seriously. Before... Yeah. It was always, it was just, oh, some, the people want to talk about it. But now countries are taken seriously. They're making laws. For mm -hmm. example, the straw. You know, a straw takes two years, a normal straw, to uh, disintegrate. And But now there's straw made out of bi bi biodegradable thing. And the other thing is, you know, when I have a cocktail, do I really need a straw or can I just drink it out of a glass? You know, so things yes. like that, you should consider. It's the small things which make the difference. Every small thing becomes a big thing. What is now not usual in a few years will be usual if we all do it. Right, the voting is finished. So, Gabby, how long does it take? 4,000 years. Glass is one of the materials that takes more time to biodegrade. However, glass is also one of the materials that can be recycled in, the, in a better way. As Juicy was saying here in Italy, for example, the bottles we used to do tomato passata, we reuse them every year. We disinfect them, we wash them, but then are reused. And so other kind of bottles. Also water bottles that once were all made of plastic, now they are changing it to glass so that it can be reused more times. Yes. And then there was a tendency to go to plastic. Now, you know, when plastic was invented, it was yeah. the thing, you know, you, you have plastic, this is super innovative. Unfortunately, now we know that plastic is a problem. Uh, we are now have something called the seventh continent. And the seven continents in the world is made out of plastic. It is in different areas of the sea, of the oceans. So it's not just one area. And the problem is that it isn't plastic which floats because through the waves and the sun and the UV, the plastic gets made into really tiny uh, articles. And therefore it cannot be collected very easily. And it goes into the fish and into our food chain. Yes. Now, one of our participants, Annabel Carlton, she did an Erasmus in Marseille and met some of the scientists of the Seven Continents Initiative. And uh, let's see what they had to tell her. What did I find? Uh, so I am a marine and I work on the boat behind the 
I help uh, the scientists to take their samples, uh, their needs, uh, when we go in the middle of the of nowhere in the sea, uh, to to understand and uh, and find uh, where all the plastic pollution go. And um, what we found is uh, there is no seven continent like uh, an island where we could walk on it, but the seventh continent looks like that in reality. So it's thousands of thousands of particles when the uh, uh, plastic garbage goes into the sea because they, it will be exposed so long the, the UV of the sun and the salt of the sea and the movement of the waves uh, will uh, split it so it's impossible to collect it today because it's too small and absolutely all the life in the sea is impacted even the plankton uh, so that's why it's really important today to understand that we have to stop uh, to throw the garbage into the sea and trying to uh, re uh, reuse all the plastic by recycling like uh, these samples. This one originally was bottles of water and it's typically the plastic they use to redo fiber shirts and sport shirts. The second one is for tools or harder plastic and originally it was tops of water bottles. So Sophie, how can we help? What you can do to help us in uh, our fight is just uh, uh, be a good human for the planet, trying to consume less stuff and uh, be more conscious about what we buy every day and what we really need for our comfort. You know? Well, thank you, Sophie, and thank you, Annabelle, for these insights. Uh, yes, we need to rethink. Do I really need that? Do I need really the straw for my cocktail? Or is it not necessary? Do I really need to buy a new bottle or can I still maybe redesign, you know, make use paints and make my bottle a bit more interesting? So it's a lot of things you can do in your own little world to make sure we have a greener, more inclusive society. Now, let's think, how can we recycle plastic? Uh, let's go again with the Menti. You, it's your turn, guys. Get your phone out and just tell me what you think. So the voting is opened. How can we recycle plastic? And if somebody has more ideas, you can always write it on the chat and we will talk. Everything. Well, apart from the fact that everybody can see the chat. So, what is it? Nobody's voting. You can enter more than one. Here they go. So, hmm. so For now, how can, we, how can we recycle plastic? Okay. We have different ideas on this. Yes. And they're, and they're thinking, you know, they're thinking, Gabby. You can see it on okay. how slow and quickly they reply. You, you're thinking, how, can I do that? Can I do, can I create an instrument out of, of, of a plastic? Can I do, create fiber clothes? Who knows? Yeah. So the countdown begins. Uh, okay. Five, four, Three, two, one, the voting is closed. So we've got 47. Oh. Oh, well done, everybody. In, in reality, all of them can be done to yes. recycle plastic. You can create, as Annabelle said in, the, um, in her video, you can create fiber clothing. So sports clothing can be created out of uh, recycled plastic. You can reuse the material for cooking and gardening. Yes, plastic, some of the plastic is hard plastic, so they can reuse it to create tools. Uh, we can create art, of course. You know, for example, one very beautiful thing is the glass mosaic. You can, yeah. you know, use different glass color and create a very beautiful art piece. Yes, you can use straw. Look, I can have a drum. This is my water bottle and I can drum with it. You know, you can. So really rethink 
don't let you know your normal convention stop you on how you can rethink uh, everything. Uh, so now let's see what other people we have Luca Corca, Matteo D'Alessandro, Diego Massari, and then Maria Rosario Desagno and Michele Polidoro and Tommaso Caltelmi and Luca Paolini. Please get ready because we want to hear from you what you think and what you do in your in your life um, to to make our world a bit better and, and your world a bit better. Are we there? Can you give us a sign of life? 3B, that's a B. You know, in Italy, we also have something called an electricity gap, but we had that for already 20 years. And it was actually introduced because Italy is one of the nuclear-free country in the world. Yeah. We had a referendum. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, we are Luca Zarca. Yeah, let, let, let me just finish. You were late. Let me just finish. <laughs> yeah. Years ago, we had a referendum and Italy chose to be nuclear-free. And, but that mean, meant that we don't have the old electricity to do whatever we want. So each household in Italy has an electricity gap. The maximum you can have is six kilowatt. And that is a way also of reducing uh, pollution. Now, I give it to you, who is there? Is it Luca, Matteo or, or Diego? Who is speaking? Uh, I'm Matteo. Okay, Matteo. It's all yours, tell us. Uh, so we are uh, Luca Gorka, Alessandro and Diego Massari. We're from uh, the Liceo Scientifico Alessandro Volta in Ortona. And we are uh, attending the third B uh, in this school. Next slice then, what do you do for recycling? Um, for uh, the recycling? We care about the environment because uh, this world is uh, our home. So we recycle uh, every trash we make and uh, we try to, to not use uh, many plastics and uh, we use the recycled paper. Okay. When, when do you use recycled paper? Uh, recycled paper for... Or we, uh, or when uh, write uh, our own work, for example, or okay. in newspaper, we I use uh, this paper. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, how do you reduce? To reduce our ecological uh, footprint, we use uh, public transport when uh, we go to the market and uh, we use uh, eco-friendly and uh, paper bags. Well done. And the paper bags can be quite fun. Next slide, reusing. Uh, we always uh, reuse our object, we said object, uh, like facial mask, uh, metallic or plastic bottles, uh, and uh, we never waste our food, but we kept we keep them for the next day. Okay, thank you. Next slide. Uh, and to help the environment, uh, we try to pick up every trash we find on the ground, and uh, we recycle the used batteries. You are from Ortona, correct? Yeah. Do you go and clean your beaches? Huh? Do you clean your beaches? Uh, I, I don't. I don't do. You don't. Shame on you. You need to go and clean your beaches. <laughs> yes, everyone. Okay. And the final solution? A final solution uh, will be. Uh, recycle everything and use uh, less plastic uh, to help the planet. And how how are you going to use less plastic? Uh, maybe uh, using uh, other types of materials 
the uh, uh, made the, the pollution uh, uh, growing uh, down. Okay, thank you very much, guys. That was a very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the next one, have we got Maria Rosario and Michele? Hi, Mario Michele. Hi, Maria Rosario. Hello, Hi. Maria Rosaria. Hi, I am Michele Polidoro from the Liceo Classi. Hi, Michele. So what are you going to tell us? How do you recycle? Uh, to recycle, we do separate collection and they use uh, recycled the paper. Okay, only the paper, also plastic and everything else? Do you recycle only paper, also plastic and bottles? I recycle plastic and bottles. Okay, next slide. Uh, reduce. So what do you do for reducing? Uh, to reduce, we can turn down the heating in the room. Uh, and the uh, air conditioner too. And we can also reduce the shower time for not wasting the water. Mm. And uh, Michele, uh, can we tell the schools maybe to, to reduce the temperature in April when it's at 21 degrees in the school and it's outside it's 20 degrees? What do you think? Can we do that in your school? <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well done, Michele. Well done. Next, yeah. what I do to reuse? Uh, to reuse. Uh, to reuse, we can use uh, washable lunch boxes. <laughs> and uh, don't use uh, disposable shopping bags. Okay. Thank you. And the next slide. What I do to repair? Um, we prefer to repair objects such as computer, shoes, or a cup of tea, uh, rather than throw them away. Good, good. And it, that which Ella said, you know, go to a vintage shop also, and your shoes might be still good to go to the uh, repair, and they still look good. Okay, what the, uh, the next slide? What do I rethink? Um, we like to think uh, objects. For example, uh, we use uh, empty plastic bottles uh, as uh, flower pots uh, or uh, pen holders. Okay, that looks nice. So uh, you are responsible for the next Erasmus Club to produce one of them. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else, guys? No. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. It was very nice to have your input. Yes. And you know, again, new ideas came up. Uh, what we can, how we can rethink, we reuse. You know, exactly shoes. You know, ah, you know, I've started that lately. I've got so many shoes and I always go and buy new shoes. And now I've started to not buy new shoes, but go to the repair shop. And you know what? They look much better now. And, and I'm enjoying them because I know they fit and they're comfortable. So shoes is the one thing which also is very good. Also because the plastic, if you have plastic shoes, will take 4,000 years to recycle. And leather shoes take five hundred thousand years. Leather is the most resistant material there is. So, you know, if you have good leather shoe, don't throw them away. Go in to the, to the repair shop and see what funky thing they can do out of them. Okay, now what about Tommaso and Luca? Are you there? Hi. Hi. My name is Tommaso. Okay. Hi, Tommaso. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hey, Hi. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Luca. 
Hi, Luca. Right, next slide. How do you recycle? Uh, to recycle, I buy recycled paper and I try to recycle it as much as possible. I do the separate collection and I have container where I throw and uh, dispose of used batteries. Fantastic. And what do you, what do, you do to reduce? Um, one thing I'm very careful about is reducing waste. In fact, I try to consume as, as less as possible. For example, when I brush my teeth or soft my hands, I never leave the tap on, or when I leave a room, I always uh, turn off the light. That's a good practice. Turn off the light, close the tap. Very simple and everybody can do it. What do you do to reuse? Uh, it's important uh, uh, to prefer items that can be reused. For example, I have a metal bottle to drink instead of buying every day a plastic bottle. Or when I go to the supermarket, I always use the same bag instead of using plastic bags. Fantastic. And the next slide. And then what do you repair? Uh, whenever possible, I always try to repair a broken object instead of buying a, a new things directly. For example, I repaired my bike and fixed my broken computer, or uh, several times I took my shoes to the uh, cobbler to repair, to repair them instead of buying a new pair because they uh, were still uh, usable. So I can bring my computer to you and you will fix my computer? Yes, yes. Good, okay, I call you. <laughs> Next slide. What do you do to resync? Uh, many times also creative methods can be used to help the planet. For example, instead of throwing away plastic bottles, uh, I give them a new life by making vases for flowers and plants. Or instead of throwing away uh, old clothes, uh, I use them to make useful objects. I love this tool uh, holder, it's very great. So, well, compliments on your English. That was a really good presentation, fantastic. Thank you guys, we really appreciate it. Do you want to say anything else? Uh, no, then. Thank you very much. So here was like, I mean, we have lots of more presentation guys, but we for time issues, uh, we had to choose a few. Uh, so, you know, some of you spoke on other days uh, where whoever is part of the Erasmus will always have a chance to speak and, uh, and, and, uh. but so we coming to the end, more or less, and, um, uh, uh, you know, the fun bit, don't you No, we have always the fun bit. So I'm going to do this yeah. and we, do you know where we're going? Mi amor, Raul, me habla con mi. I'm coming to Spain now. We're coming to Spain. Do you like my fun? Do I do it right, Raul? Is it okay like this? It is perfect. You do it, it great. It is perfect. <laughs> so why are we going to Spain? Oh, yeah. coming know, to we want to talk about inclusion. And Raul, you have a song, which is your national song, but it's more than your national song, correct? What is it called? It is called, the style is called flamenco. Oh, flamenco. Uh, should, we ask, yes. should we ask everybody if anybody has ever heard of flamenco? Come on, tell us. You, you put the mantle up and let's see if you have, how many of you know what flamenco is? You've got one minute. So is it something to eat? Do I dance it? Do I sing it? He said, what is it? You know, flamenco could be a nice dish, Raul. What do you think? It's a nice dish for, 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 for um, a dish, a flamenco. What are we eating if we eat flamenco? <laughs> what do you think, Raul? <laughs> and you think? Oh, we have quite yeah. a few people which know what flamenco is. Uh, I then want to know if you danced it, however. <laughs> so, Raul, what is flamenco? Flamenco is an original art from Andalusia, okay, like it's the southeast region of Spain. And it's a way of thinking that it's a mix of different cultures that live in this region of Spain. 
uh, it's mixed and it integrates cultures from gypsies, from Arab culture, Christian, and also Jewish, okay? And it started only by a kind a way of singing, but it, it, it was um, developed, you know, every, uh, after some years, well, it, and it changed it a little bit to not only singing, but also dance and, and music, uh, especially the guitar. Yeah, but uh, uh, Raul, it's a very expression of Bruno because initially it was because um, the men and the women were segregated. So the men were put on one part and the women were put in another part. And it was a way of communicating. So my mm -hmm. good friend, uh, Claudia Moreno, who unfortunately cannot be with us today, was we greet her. She taught me one thing. She said, you know, there's um, singing, there's dancing has expression. Mm -hmm. So when the, the people sing, if they understood, they would all go at, the, at a certain point, go ballet, correct? Exactly, yeah, it yeah. is as So they sing and body meant, I understood. Yeah. And yeah. it was also, uh, there were different types of flamenco. And there was one flamenco which was from the boys to the girls and the girls to the boys. And when the girls uh, accepted, she would do this hand movement and go, yes, Ole. she started dancing. Yeah. Ole. So, yeah. so come on, guys, I want you all to go. Clap your hands and go, vale. <laughs> put your mood, <laughs> vale. <laughs> and if you agree, you go with the hands like this and you go, vale. Vale. <laughs> so, and, uh, but what is very interesting is that UNESCO, I, I heard, correct me if mm -hmm. I'm wrong, Raul, uh, has put this as intangible cultural heritage of humanity. So the flamenco mm -hmm. is so important because it includes different culture, like you said before, it has the great Gregorian chant, it's got the Arabic sound, the African rhythm, the European music, the clapping, mm -hmm. the ballet, the ole, which meant yes, or I understood. Uh, and it's very, very rhythmic and very colorful. So, and also they used to have fans, the ladies. And I was also told that the fan, depending on how you did that, it meant yes or no, and oh, I'm angry. So if the woman was angry and the thing was then they would go, and that meant I'm really angry with you and what you told me. So there's a lot of hidden messages in the flamenco. And what I want you to do before we, we, we leave, I'm going to not show you yet the flamenco because in this case you disappear. So I'm going to first give you a survey to do uh, so you can tell us what you, uh, there's a Google form, click on it and please just tell us the, what you liked and didn't like about this. And at the end, we will dance and probably dance and clap, say bale on ole on a beautiful flamenco. So please, uh, we give you two minutes to do our Google form. There's no right, no wrong. Please give us your honest opinion. Uh, the other thing is we have another meeting if you want to join us on the 20th of December at five o'clock set time. And it will be about uh, tradition and New Year's um, festivities. Resolutions, yeah. Solution, resolution, or festivities. So you can join on that. But uh, please take two seconds of your time where you just fill in that survey for us. Uh, an hour has passed, believe it or not. So we're just doing the last thing. Let's give you two minutes to, to do this. And I hope what we've done today makes you think and makes you now think I can do something. It's not just the politician, it's just not the big people. I myself can do my little things which will change the world. And our Erasmus Club are here for this. We're recording them because they will be seen by people in Europe. They will be seen by our politician. They will be giving an input that there are people out there, young people, beautiful young people, the future, 
which want a better future, more inclusive future, a greener future. So thank you for being with us and, um, and tell us on the chat when you've done. Yes. So that we can then go and dance the flamenco. Gabby, what are you going to do? Are you agreeing? Are you going ole? Or ole. <laughs> Both, everything. <laughs> Raul, what about you? Is it ballet or is it. Uh... I'm more with ballet. You go with ballet? <laughs> you go with ballet? And the clapping, you know, it's like uh, there's different clapping. Uh, so it's uh, when there's a sound like this, right? And then they sound like this. And uh, uh, my my friend Mo Claudia, which unfortunately she wanted to be here, but she, her, she's not very well with her back, so we, we wish her well. Um, uh, well, she she she's a, a flamenco dancer, so maybe another day I can get her to show us some flamenco. We have here Dan. Okay. Uh, Dan. What about uh, everybody else? Have you done? And we have about 32 now, so maybe somebody's finishing. Okay, give us another minute. Um, you see, we can see everything immediately. You sitting where you sitting, we sitting in Lanciano. We greet you all, but we see you all. <laughs> <laughs> God of technology. A few years ago, for us oldies, Evangela, we couldn't do that, but now we can. <laughs> okay, we're done. Okay, so I think most of you probably have done or are finishing. So you can send it even after we finish this. Are we ready to dance flamenco? Yes. Come on. Raul? Yes, vamos? Yes, yes, yes. Vamos. It's you, so you have to say vamos, and I just say vale. <laughs> vamos. Va vale. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Okay, now all switch on your microphone, and I want from everybody either a ballet or an ole. Okay, everybody switched off the microphone. Microphone in mom. We want to see you. Come on, guys. It's not just me. Everybody switch on their mic, their, their phones, their microphones, and their um, camera. We can do it, we can do it. Come on, scientifico, liceo classico, you can do it. All right. Amy, are you ready to do it? Yes. You are? Okay. <laughs> Ella, as in can hear us. So. Yeah, I can, but because of the connection, I cannot turn on my camera. I'm yeah, but we sad. can hear Ella. You can do it. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
As it is Raoul's country, you have to count till three. Oh. And okay. we all say either vale or ole. On okay. Raul. In Spanish. Tres, dos, uno. Ole. Ole. Well done. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for being here with us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and thanks for all your contribution. It was really fantastic as usual. And I'm really proud to be part of the Erasmus Club and see you on the 20th of December. And we want to know all your traditions of, of festivities. So Christmas, Hanukkah, or any other festivities you do, and or your uh, New Year's resolution. Uh, for the guys in Italy, which are not here yet, uh, if you want to be part of it, please uh, send us a WhatsApp or an email, so you will, you will be put into the WhatsApp group, and you will get all the information uh, to do this. So big kisses, baci baci, mwah, to everybody, and see you next month. Keep bye saying. Bye. 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 B